We found that creative people, though they may be dissimilar in many respects, have certain attitudes and employ certain techniques to their own benefit and to the benefit of us all. Some reminders of these techniques and attitudes have been supplied for your personal use. They're in the last section of your album. I'd like now to use these techniques and attitudes as the basis for a descriptive sketch of a creative person. As we go through this verbal sketch, I'd like you to think about this person. Where and when have you seen him or her? Is this a person you know at work or in your neighborhood or right at home? It'll be helpful to listen to this message frequently and be reminded of these techniques and attitudes which, if practiced regularly, will result in your living an even more creative, rewarding life. Another good idea is to project the image of the creative person on your own actions, then judge for yourself what areas can stand some improvement. First of all, the creative person realizes that his mind is an inexhaustible storehouse. It can provide anything he earnestly wants in life. But in order to draw from this storehouse, he must constantly augment its stock of information, thoughts, and wisdom. His mind gives him ideas, and ideas solve problems. The person we're talking about has a carefully thought out and clearly defined set of goals toward which he's working. By knowing where he's going and determining to get there, he gives meaning and purpose to his daily work, to everything he does. He never wastes time just drifting. He's always in control of his life. The creative person knows his brain thrives on exercise, so he uses a part of each day for thinking imaginatively about three things, himself, his work, and his fellow man. By asking himself questions involving these three areas, he's prospecting in the richest gold mine ever known, and the answers to his questions are often ideas that he can put into immediate action. He reaches out for ideas. He respects the minds of others, gives credit to their mental abilities. Everyone has ideas, they're free, and many of them are excellent. By first listening to ideas, and then thinking them through before judging them, the creative person avoids prejudice and closed-mindedness. This is the way he maintains a creative climate around himself. You know, ideas are like slippery fish. They seem to have a peculiar knack of getting away from us. Because of this, the creative person always has a pad and pencil handy. When he gets an idea, he writes it down. He knows that many people have found their whole lives changed by a single great thought. By capturing ideas immediately, he doesn't risk forgetting them. And these captured ideas are deposited in idea banks, eight and a half by 11 inch envelopes, which are labeled with topics of interest. A friend of mine, a very successful writer, writes his books this way. He labels each envelope with the name of a chapter. Then whenever he gets an idea or finds new material, he sees that it gets into the proper envelope. Before long, his book has practically written itself. Having a sincere interest in people, our creative person listens carefully when someone else is talking. He's intensely observant, absorbing everything he sees and hears. He behaves as if everyone he meets wears a sign that reads, I am the most important person on earth. Thus, he makes it a point always to talk with other people's interests in mind. And it pays off in a flood of new ideas and information which would otherwise be lost to him forever. Widening his circle of friends and broadening his base of knowledge are two more very effective techniques of the creative person. If he's staying at a hotel where there's a convention not allied to his own work, he'll drop in on it, make new friends, and listen for ideas that might help him. He's always looking for better ways to do his work and live his life. The creative person anticipates achievement. He expects to win, and the above average production engendered by this kind of attitude affects those around him in a positive way. He's a plus factor for all who know him. You know, problems are challenges to creative minds. Without problems, there'd be little reason to think at all. Welcoming them as normal and predictable parts of living singles him out as an above average person. He knows it's a waste of time merely to worry about problems, so he wisely invests the same time and energy in solving problems. He has an organized approach to problem solving. It might involve the eight steps described in your worksheet for creative problem solving. He can even avoid problems by anticipating potentially troublesome areas and doing something about them before they turn sour on him. The research and development departments of many leading companies are constantly involved in exactly this sort of advanced planning. The creative person knows the value of giving himself and his ideas away. He's a go-giver as well as a go-getter. The hand that gives always gathers, and doing things for other people is a vital part of his way of life. When the creative person gets an idea, he puts it through a series of steps designed to improve it. He thinks in new directions. He builds big ideas from little ones, new ideas from old ones, 
associating ideas, combining them, adapting, substituting, magnifying, minifying, rearranging, and reversing ideas. He steers clear of mind weakeners, noise, fatigue, needless worry, unbalanced diets, overindulgence in food or drink, and people with negative attitudes. He asks polite, probing questions that bolster the ego and expand the mind. Questions are the creative acts of the intelligence, and he uses them often and to everyone's advantage. And the creative person uses his spare time wisely. He knows that many of the great ideas, books, and inventions were conceived during the creator's spare time. We all have the same number of minutes in a day, and the creative person values each one of them. Do you recognize the person in this message? Well, he's someone you ought to know. As you use these suggestions and creativity aids you've learned in this program to further increase your personal potential, I believe you'll soon discover this person's identity, and you'll be pleased with your own enhanced ability. Thank you. This is the final session in creative thinking, but I hope you realize the importance of replaying these sessions often. Each time you do, you'll be stimulated to use more of your creative ability, motivated to become more proficient in this exciting art. Now, with your interest in mind, I'd like to get down to a few personal remarks on creative thinking. Creative thinkers have been around longer than teachers of creative thinking, or even those who would define it. In fact, by definition, creative thinking seems to divide itself into two areas, hard work and inspiration. You've had the experience of working long and hard on a problem without any real results, and then all of a sudden, the solution hits you. It's like someone turning on a bright light. But this wonderful experience almost never comes without our first preparing the way, and that's where the hard work comes in. Those who give up in frustration simply fail to understand that this is the way the mind operates. It's the methodical striving that makes possible the illuminating flash of insight. Everyone can be creative, but it seems that only a few know they can or realize the success and satisfaction that come as a result of being more imaginative and more energetic in their thoughts and action. We have a tendency to go along, a tendency not to question something once it's been established as satisfactory. Let's find an example. Here's a down-to-earth one. How do you scramble eggs at your house? Have you ever tried mixing a dash or two of bitters in with the raw eggs, maybe a couple of good squirts of Tabasco sauce? Or first sauteing some chopped onions and green peppers and then pouring in the beaten eggs and just before they're done adding diced fresh tomatoes? This makes fixing scrambled eggs more interesting and it makes eating them a great deal more satisfying. Now, if this kind of thinking can change cooking from a laborious chore into a creative, rewarding art, Think what it can do in countless other fields of endeavor, including your own. Just as I challenge the way you scramble eggs, challenge at least in the back of your mind everything you're still doing as you used to do it, or as your mother or father or great-great-grandfather used to do it. Most people today agree that the once fervently spoken line, what was good enough for my father is good enough for me, was a fatuous, absurd remark. What was good enough for dad is not good enough for us today, and what's good enough for us won't be good enough for our youngsters. That's the way this old world improves itself, and that's the way it should be. A leading businessman has said, if you're doing anything this year the same way you did it last year, you're in serious trouble. The trouble might not come from the way you're doing things, but it very likely will come unless you maintain a constant awareness of the necessity, the inevitability of change. In this program, we've given you the creative thinking methods developed by the best minds in this field. Creative thinking is a learnable skill and a practical art. But creative thinking, by its very nature, resists perfect definition and rigid rules of conduct, as does music or painting or any other art. Becoming accomplished at any art takes practice and more practice, years of it. You can start practicing it right now. You can make it one of your most valuable assets now and from here on out. And if you'll continue to practice it every day of your life, you'll become a master at it and win a master's rewards. Maybe it doesn't make any difference if you still lace your shoes the way you've always laced them, but it does make a difference if you don't challenge the way you lace them or why you lace them. Just such a challenge changed the shoe industry, and today a good many men's shoes are made with no laces at all. So form the habit of really thinking about, of questioning everything you do, everything you see. Some people can walk by an empty lot for years without giving it a second thought, without really seeing it at all. But one man will see it not as a vacant lot, but as a beautifully landscaped property sporting a handsome new office building. He'll do something worthwhile for his community and probably make himself a fine profit in real estate. When you ask yourself, 
why the steering wheel on your car is round. It's not necessarily because you want to invent a square one. It's because you're practicing your art, the art of creative thinking. You're sharpening your mind and encouraging it to perform the highest function a human being is capable of, deliberate creative thought. Then when you apply your art to your work, to your home and family and friends, your mind flashes out of its scabbard like a finely tempered steel blade, probing, seeking, penetrating through the old to the new that lies just under the surface. Creative thinking is an exciting pursuit. It's exhilarating and it makes for a wonderful conversation at the dinner table while riding in the car at any time. In the evening, your creative awareness might result in you asking yourself, why am I sitting here like a mesmerized chicken watching people kill each other from the backs of horses on my television screen? Isn't there something more interesting, more rewarding I could be doing with a part of this time? Isn't there a subject I'd like to know more about? What about that book I've been meaning to read? You know, one hour a night adds up quickly to a really enormous amount of time. Time is one of the few things man can't buy more of, and it's a good idea to use all of it as wisely as we know how. When you get an idea you think is good, hang it up on an imaginary hook and walk all the way around it. Look at it from every angle, poke it, pull it, twist it, stretch it in new directions, try to improve it. If it's an idea you can't use, give it away and get another you can work with. Ideas are free, yet they're the most valuable commodities known to man, and the great ideas ennoble the minds that conceive them. Make creative thinking a normal part of your life and attitude, and you'll find your world being filled to the brim with wonderful new interest. And one of these days, you're going to get the idea that will make a really substantial contribution, one that will revolutionize your life. For it'll be an idea that will make the world a better place because you happen to live here for a while. In the meantime, just looking for that idea can be a challenge, an inspiration, and a lot of fun. Good hunting and good creative thinking. This is Earl Nightingale, and thank you.